Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Bandwagon Sports. Uh, I'm your host, Stephen Hayward, and today I'm going to be talking about why I want Fyodor Zvechkov. Now, I am a fan of the Tampa Bay Lightning. They don't have a pick in the first round. They don't have a pick in the second round. Their first pick is in the third round, and that is way out of range for Fyodor Zvechkov. But I still thought it would be interesting for me to make videos on maybe some more of the underrated guys in this draft that I would love to have on the Lightning personally. And I'm going to start off here with Fyodor Zvechkov. Um, so Fyodor Zvechkov's date of birth was April the 5th, 2003, which makes him 18 years of age, obviously. Um, and he plays center. So he, well, Zvechkov is a guy who plays center and wing. He can do it both. Um, he's six foot, 179 pounds, and he was born in Togliati, Russia. Um, he's a left-handed shooter. He currently plays for a lot of Togliati in the VHL slash MHL slash KHL. And he, he ac actually has a contract going until 2022, 2023, which is two years after his draft year, which will mean that the soonest he can come over to North America is when he is 20, 21 years old. So not not the worst thing in the world. At least it's not Matt Vemichkov where he signed a six-year contract on the KHL, which is like, I don't even know what to say at that. It's just kind of huge for Michkov and his draft stock. But still, uh, Zvechkov is going to be over in the KHL until he's 20. So, let's get into his stats now. He played in the MHL and the VHL this year, mainly in the VHL though, which I think is the proper place for him to play. I don't really see him as, a, as an MHL player. I think he's too good for the third tier Russia League. But in the MHL, in 15 games, he put up 4 goals, 11 assists for 15 points. He was a plus 5 and had 35 penalty minutes as well. So, he's he, he can be a big time penalty guy. Um... And, you know, he can be a good compliment, complimentary scorer, too. He didn't blow anybody out of the water with his scoring. He was point per game, but that's still good enough for a good player. Good complimentary scoring. Um, and I thought he was really good in the MHL. Uh, he moved up to the VHL, and in 38 games in the VHL, he had 5 goals, 10 assists for 15 points. He was a plus 3 and had 6 penalty minutes, but still showed that he can score, he could be a good top six scorer, he showed his defensive game, and I think that it's it's great, um, and currently in the U18 tournament, he has two games played, two goals, two assists for four points, and Zvechkov looks really good for Russia in the U18s, um, looks not out of place at all, he's playing very well with the other players on that team, which is awesome for him. And um, I think this U18 tournament could definitely wait, raise his draft stock, and I think it will, personally for me, if he keeps going this way. Um, now let's get into his top three strengths. His strengths is he's a top three defensive forward in this draft. Um, Atu Ratu, Fyodor Zvechkov, and... Matthew Beniers probably have the top three defensive game in this draft. Zvechkov might be the best out of all three of those guys. Zvechkov is such a great defensive player. He just makes plays on both ends effortlessly. He has great uh, offensive and defensive zone transitions. Like he's he's like Anton Lundell last year. I don't want to say he's as good as Lundell. But he's definitely in the same ballpark as Lundell when it comes to pure defensive game. Um, just outstanding. Svechkov is so great at, with the defensive play. Um, he has a really solid play driving ability. Svechkov can drive plays up the middle. He funnels pucks to the middle. He's just He really makes things like getting the puck through the middle. Past defenders look pretty easily. Look pretty easy, sorry. And it's just he, he can really drive a play. He's... Usually the first one to the puck, he doesn't slow down. He powers just right on into the offensive zone and strikes. And a lot of his teammates are not very good, and they do not handle the puck very well, which is one of the big issues with Zvechkov, is he'll make a great feed to the middle, and his advanced analytics will go down because that teammate bobbles the pass. They can't receive it cleanly. 
um, they go for the shot and they miss the net. Zvechkov could have much, much, much better numbers if he didn't play on a lot of Togliati. And I think that Zvechkov is easily the best player on that team. He just doesn't have the talent to work with where he can kind of flourish under that situation. Um, and I'll get into that with his weaknesses. But also Zvechkov is a good leader. Again, like I said, best player on Logatogliati this year in the MHL and probably in the VHL too. I don't really see any guys in the VHL being any more, any better than Zvechkov. I think Zvechkov has just endless potential for that team. But Zvechkov is a great leader, really plays the puck well, which has nothing to do with being a leader. But he, he's, he's a great locker room guy. Zvechkov just really leads his team. He doesn't complain with what he has to work with. He just works with it. And I think that's a really great skill, being able to, you know, not, not get frustrated with the lack of talent that he has to work with. And it might be because it's his hometown team, but that's just a theory of mine. <laughs> Um, let's get into his weaknesses now, though. Even if Zvechkov has great offensive skills and his teammates are great, aren't very good at, you know, proving that he has good offensive skills, he is still offensively inconsistent. Zvechkov's... Zvechkov's... Uh, pff, I cannot speak. Zvechkov shows flashes of greatness here and there. He'll have some really, really good games on offense where he will just look like the Connor McDavid of the MHL, just totally run up the middle, totally split by defenseman without any effort. Um, but then there's other games where he just really struggles to do anything. His defensive zone play will always bail him out when his offense is failing, but just a real offensive inconsistency in Zvechkov's game, and I think he's going to really need to iron that out if he hopes to make an NHL impact one day, but we will see. And I already mentioned this with his strengths, but another one of the weaknesses with Zvechkov is his team lacks talent. And this will go into my other weakness of his, where Zvechkov won't flourish unless he actually has good teammates. I think Zvechkov is a guy who can do well on his own, but I don't think he's going to be the special prospect that, you know, people who take this draft more seriously see in him. I think that Zvechkov really needs to have some good line mates that can create chances offensively for him to really flourish offensively and look like a dominant and present player on the ice. I just don't think that you're going to get an outstanding performance out of Zvechkov when he's playing with, you know, bottom, borderline, third line players. I think you need to put him with some good players, with maybe some not star players, but definitely guys like Matthew Kachuk, for instance, a guy who can really drive a play, a guy who has lots of talent. Tim Stutzla, who even in his rookie season looks amazing. Just you can't be putting him with total scrubs out there. You need to put him with great players for him to look great. And I have his NHL upside at 60% or, yeah, his NHL upside slash certainty at 60%. I think Zvechkov will make an NHL impact one day. I think his defensive play alone is good enough to make it to the NHL on a fourth-line roll. Um, whether his offense follows will probably decide where he ends up in any given lineup. If he can truly develop that offensive play, I think he can be a first-line center, no doubt, because the defensive play is amazing. If he can get more consistent and better on the offensive game, then he will be great. Um, and as NHL comparable, I have Mikhail Backlund of the Calgary Flames right now. I think Backlund and Zvechkov have a really solid defensive game. But when you see Backlund and you see him with guys who don't really flourish offensively, he looks very invisible on the offensive on the offensive side of the game. And I think right now that's a really good comparable for Zvechkov because in the MHL, in the VHL, he's playing with not so great guys and he's still putting up good numbers, but that's not going to translate into the NHL. Sorry about that cut, camera cut out, low storage. It happens every time once I reach 500 megabytes, but as I was saying, even though he's putting up good numbers in the MHL and VHL, that's not going to translate to a higher league in the MHL where his offense is already inconsistent in those leagues. So I think Michael Backlund's a good comparison. But that is going to do it for this episode. Um, if you enjoyed, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Um, leave a comment down below. I love reading your guys' comments, even if they're negative. 
I don't care. I just love getting responses on my videos. Um, but yeah, tell me who maybe you guys want me to do a prospect review of in the next video, because this is why I want. But it's also kind of a prospect review at the same time, so I can do prospect reviews uh, solely if you want me, guy if you guys want me to. Um, so, anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. But for now, bye.